Well, let's hear more from Gary Russell's story. You heard his upbringing, grew up in church, grew up with sports, had a car accident, a major football injury, lost his vision, still was able to go to college despite all that, and that's where he met Jesus and changed his life. But just like so many of us, he knew he had the passion to do something. God was calling him to do something, but he had a family to provide for. He had to figure out how to make all of this work. Certain things weren't working. God, where are you? And what is your plan for the Russell family and Gary's life? Well, Gary, let's talk more. Let's jump now to 2007 and you get an opportunity to travel to Mexico. So I'm working for the state of Ohio, opportunities for Ohioans with disabilities. And my church says they're going on a mission trip to Tijuana, Mexico, and, and they bill it as this house building ministry. And so we go down and we build these 12 by 12 and 12 by 16 shelters. So that's smaller than most of our bedrooms and whole families will live in them. Mm -hmm. And, but when I was down there, I was like trying to figure out what exactly we're doing. Cause we did build houses. We built, our team built four houses. You build a whole house in a day. And then we had like six or eight teams. So we built six or eight houses a day for four days. And, but the teaching is what Caravan Ministries, Mexico Caravan Ministries exists for. And, and there are two strong messages. The first is that Jesus wants all of your life. When Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, that wasn't a half-hearted image. That wasn't a pretty necklace that you wear on your neck. It was, it was the instrument of death. It was the execution. When someone was carrying their cross, they weren't planning dinner or their vacation or thinking about tomorrow. And that's what, how Jesus calls us to live. And so that's the first message that we have at Caravan. And the second one is that there are still th over 3,000 specific social linguistic groups of people that have no access to the gospel. So we're talking 2.5 billion people, almost a third of the world's mm -hmm. population has no access to the gospel. And no access means they don't have a Christian coworker, they don't have a Bible that they can pick up, there's not a church on the corner. We, as the church, have to take Jesus' last words very seriously. He said, go and make disciples. Before the resurrection, Jesus talked about all kinds of different subjects, from family to finances to farming, you name it, he talked about it. But after the resurrection, and you can look it up, he only talked about go and make disciples. He mm -hmm. wants his people back. God sent the Son, the, Sp the Son sent the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit sends you and me. And that is our mandate to go to them. And God calls each one of us to a different location. Some of us may be called just into our region because obviously there are people here who Absolutely. need to hear Christ. But God called the Russell family to Tijuana, Mexico. It took four trips. Mm. What was God doing to you in your life as that was happening? I would come home and be so miserable at my life. I mean, I was so <laughs> frustrated with my job. God, there's something more, there's gotta be more. And I would, I, would, I would make the calls to the mission agencies, and I finally said to one of them, I said, do you get a, a lot of calls after short-term trips? And they were like, yeah. People come home, they're excited, and then it, it dwindles. You know, we get distracted in this culture, and mm -hmm. we see so many different things, and we start chasing the American dream instead of what Christ's dream is. And so in, thir in 12, I took a trip. It was my fourth time down there. And on Monday, I wrote in my journal, I said, God, I'm not doing it this year. You're a big God. If you want me in China or Timbuktu, I'm willing to go. But I'm not making a single call. I'm not going to do anything to make it happen myself. You want it, you do it. Fine. The very next day, I walk into the room, and our director, Eddie Passmore, him and his wife, direct the ministry. And he says, how you doing? And I said, I don't know. I still want to go, but nothing seems to happen. And what seemed to me kind of off the cuff, he says, well, it's not the 1040 window but have you ever thought about coming here? And I about burst into tears at the moment, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm in. You know? and, and eight months later, we moved three of our children down. We left our oldest, who was a senior in high school at the time, and with my parents, and we moved to Tijuana, Mexico. So you moved from Ohio, Tijuana, Mexico. Weather's a little bit different. It's a little nicer there. We have sun about 360 days a year. Ah, well, you're, you're here in Ohio on our cold streak. And we haven't seen the sun in days. <laughs> but you know what? God can work anywhere. Amen. God is obviously working. Uh, give us a brief. We're almost running out of time, but I have two more questions I want to ask you. And first of all, give us a brief look at now. How is God working now in Tijuana, Mexico with your family and with 
the Mexico Caravan Ministries? Well, as a ministry, we mobilize Christ followers for missions. And so we bring in interns and they come and work for three months to 15 months. And they are in a strong discipleship program. They're memorizing scripture. They're living in community. One of the big problems that I've noticed living there for myself was that even though I thought I had friends and relating with people in the States, I wasn't really submitted to people. I didn't live in that community. And we think we have to do it ourselves. And I'm pretty bad at that. And I'm learning that I have to rely on other people. I cannot even walk with Christ by myself successfully. Mm. I need other people. Wow, that's, that's, that's a strong message. And that is really important for us to be hearing. And finally, Gary, I wish we could talk much longer. I would love to hear more about the things that God is doing. But for the people at home who are saying, I know that God is stirring me somewhere but I'm worried about the money and I'm worried about the distance. I'm worried about leaving family. I don't know how to truly hear what God is calling me to do. Do you have any advice for them? My advice is to stay in the word and get around people. We think it's impossible to go be missionaries because we may not know any, but they're out there. And if you seek them, seek those people, get the people around you, stay close to Jesus and kind of surround yourself with godly people. Anything is possible. All right. Well, you are living proof of that. It's incredible. I'm thankful that God saved you in those times in that car accident and that football accident. God obviously was preparing. Uh, you may not have known it then, but mm. you know, and we, we will know in heaven exactly how many people are impacted because of your faithfulness. Thank you, Gary. Of course, you can find out more about the Mexico Caravan Ministries. Uh, right there is the family website, russellmexicoadventure.com. They are, um, you can always support them as well. As you know, missionaries are constantly in need of financial and prayer support. And you can find out more about the ministry itself, Mexico Caravan Ministries.